I have a series of questions to ask, and but I think I'd like to start with um, asking you what is, what is self criticism and uh, feeling unworthy all about? Is that a learned behavior? You, yes, it is learned. Uh -huh. You weren't born with it. Uh -huh. You learned it from you learned it from those around you who wanted to feel good but didn't and held you as their object of attention while they didn't feel good. So then you took personally the response you were getting from them as if there was something wrong with your behavior that evoked that. And then and then you just kept forking off in response to that. Well, I don't understand why I can't drop that. You know, with what I know now. Well, you can. You I, can. I, I'm sure I can, but I but I don't. <laughs> Well, the reason, the reason that most don't is because it is a series of incremental efforts. And we think that the thing that has mixed most of you up about quantifying your journey is that when you're feeling unworthy and you want to feel appreciated, there's a huge vibrational variance between that. And when you try to make the jump, you fall in the ditch, you see, where if you could move incrementally into increasingly better feeling statements, then suddenly you'd discover, you would realize that you are feeling better. You will have just bridged yourself into yeah. a different vibration. It's more forking, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's working your way out of it. It is. Yeah. Just, and, and not asking it to be one giant leap over, but just mm -hmm. this feels better and this feels better and this feels better and this feels better. Mm -hmm. so, therapists have discovered that if they can get you to shift your negative attention from yourself to someone else, that you receive some temporary improvement. And we agree with that. But then you've got to shift it from negative attention to them into something else. We don't want you to end up to go from Phoenix to Yuma, only back to Phoenix to Yuma, only back to Phoenix to Yuma. In other words, it's nice when you're able to continue along the emotional scale. Want to talk about specifics? Not really. I'd like to ask some other questions. Over yes. Me. Okay. Um, we I, think that the answer that you were looking for to that first question happened before you even got in the chair. In other words, that's what we've been talking about all morning here. And we can foresee that wonderful vibrational movement is going to happen for all of you now that you have this picture in your mind. Mm -hmm. Now that you realize, right now, I can choose something. Forking. And we want to emphasize... Choose a small fork. Don't try to get all the way there. In other words, just choose something that feels incrementally better because you can do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, uh, some things I jotted down. In, about 35 years ago, I took an LSD trip. And I had this incredible feeling of well-being. I knew that everything was good, everything was right, and everything would always be that way. So something, was, so something in the chemistry of that. Well, I was wondering, I want to ask you: Was, it, was that like a near death or death experience? Was that, was that connection was with a, source? It or? was a distraction of the part of your thinking that causes the resistance that keeps you from feeling like that all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in that's words, kind of that's why that's, people call it high. In other words, there, they, it, it, literally it is because the, it, that feeling of high is the releasing of the resistance and the reconnecting with who you really are. Yeah. But the reason that we are not really encouragers of utilizing drugs in order to achieve it is because no effort then is made in the cleaning up of your vibration. And so then you become dependent upon the drug for the sensation. Okay, well, I don't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, we want you, we still want you to achieve the high, though. Yeah, well, I wonder if, if that's kind of where this is leading, where yes. it's all leading back to that or back yes. to that sensation. Yes. Um, before, I, before I found your philosophy or became aware of, your, of you, I was very interested... And by the way, before you go further, we want, to, we want to respond to that by saying, you must have been somewhere in the vicinity or you wouldn't have found us. Mm -hmm. Well, well, okay, you see, but, but you see what we're getting at. In other words, can you feel that? How things lead to things, lead to things, lead to things, lead to things, lead to things. You you have to be in the vibrational vicinity. Well, but but there's a con there's a contrast between where I was and where you where you are. If I put it that way, I was very interested in the power of now, and I don't see how your philosophy and that philosophy mesh. In what way? Well, it seems to me that the power of now is very passive. It's a matter of relaxing into the moment and pretty much floating with, going with the flow. 
Well, we are encouraging that too, but we know that you're going to be focusing, in other words, the, the most productive use of time, if you've got some active resistance within you, is to go into a state of meditation where you deactivate yeah. that thought. Right. But, and all of your power is now. So we think it is a fabulous title. But you are focusing mechanisms and you are going to be focusing on something. And so a deliberate awareness that you have the power to choose what you focus on in your powerful now is important. Mm -hmm. You are creators and a creator focuses, you see. And we acknowledge that we've been talking about this for some time. We called the gathering the science of deliberate creation. And we loved the title of that because science indicated the ongoing evolution of it. Deliberate indicated the specifically applied deliberate focus of it. And creation, the natural response to any kind of focus. We thought it was a wonderful title. But we noticed as people began steeping themselves in the concepts of the science of deliberate creation that they became increasingly concerned or even worried about the thoughts that they were thinking. They became monitors of thoughts. So much so that their thoughts began to worry them and they began to criticize themselves and others about the thoughts that they were thinking. And so then we began, so now we're taking another fork, so to speak. In other words, we saw people benefiting and then we saw them sort of turning in a way that was not as beneficial. So then we began emphasizing something that would pull them more in the direction of what they are wanting by saying to them that the stream of well-being is always flowing, that well-being will always be there for you unless you're doing something that keeps you from being a vibrational match with it and that you are extensions of source energy and that that source is always flowing to you and you will you will be the receiver of it if you are in the vibrational vicinity of that pure positive energy and then we began talking about step one and step two and step three which is step one is the asking step two is source answers but step three is you've got to be in the receiving mode so we began emphasizing the allowing part of the equation and that's what we're hearing from you in your description of this the power of now is that when you are relaxing when you're meditating, when you're soothed, when you're not pushing against something you don't want, then you're in the place of receiving what you are wanting. Uh -huh. So then we point out that step one, which is the asking, and step three, which is the receiving, are two separate steps. And that step one happens automatically. Your contrasting life is going to cause you to want things. It's going to cause you to ask for things. You cannot receive answers to questions that you are not asking. So contrasting life causes you to ask. That's Step one, maybe the book, The Power of Now, we haven't read it and we, and we encourage Esther not to read because we don't want her to worry about where things are coming to her from, but it sounds to us from what you are projecting here that The Power of Now may be a very good book that is emphasizing step three, getting into the allowing mode where you are allowing the things that you've been asking for to flow into your experience. But you cannot stop asking. The entire universe has been established to put you, genius creator, out here on the leading edge with enough contrast around you that you are going to ask. You are born to ask. You can't stop doing that, you see. Mm. But we agree with the precepts that you're offering here from the power of now that the emphasis that is of the most value to most of you is bringing yourself into vibrational alignment and that is by soothing and relaxing. Every process that we have offered, and there have been many of them, have been offered with the effort and desire that you will release resistance and allow your full connection. And we agree with what we think we've heard you say here. You should not have to work for that. It is a given. It is natural that you feel good. It is natural that you have instinct. It is natural that things go well for you. But when you look out into your population, a lot of people have sort of forked themselves into quagmires. And sometimes it takes some explanation to help them move back into the stream. And so we don't think there's any contradiction in the works. We think there is different emphasis from both works depending upon the point that is trying to be made. There's, to me, there's a little contradiction, and it has to do with uh, the fact that there's an, there's an action journey and an emotion journey, but the emotion journey breaks, splits into two things where one is an action journey, which means... Where, where, where are you getting that? Well, it seems to me that if you... Work, you have work to do, you say that a lot, and it, it's a matter of 
choosing the right fork, that to me that's an action journey. Well, we agree with like we agree with you in this sense. You you can't just all of a sudden stop everything you're doing and disassociate from all of your relationships with people and with work and just all of a sudden say uh, everyone clear out i'm just going to focus and think for a while because there is a momentum to your life experience and we are not suggesting that what we are suggesting is that you stand where you are and that you make the best of where you are from where you are in any moment in time and as you do that where you are is going to get a little better in other words, that really is the way we would approach life if we were in your physical bodies. Okay, I, I, and so the reason that we talk about the emotional journey is because we want you to realize that while you're standing here in this situation where you feel obliged to take this action, you can take that action with this emotion or with this emotion. And as you're taking the action with this emotion, the action is compounding something that's not working very well for you. As you're taking the action with this emotion, now the action is compounded, or the emotion and the action are working together towards something that will be more beneficial to you. You can't for very long just cease to act, and you certainly can't for very long cease to think. So you're always offering a vibration. We just want you to guide it a little more specifically. So that's why we say, as you think, as you think and feel, so you notice the correlation between the way that thought has caused you to feel, and then you think and feel, and then you think and feel. Before long, you can't tell that you're not feeling and then thinking. In other words, at first, I've gone this way, maybe down the path that doesn't feel so good. So now I really make an effort to think in order to feel better. And I do. Right. And so now I really make an effort to think and feel better. Mm -hmm. And I do. Mm -hmm. And now I really make an effort to think and feel better. And now I do. But eventually, you feel so good that the way you feel influences the next thought. Mm -hmm. So at first it's think and then feel, and then think and then feel, and then think and then feel, and then think and then feel. But before you know it, you can't tell that you're not feeling and then thinking and feeling and then thinking and feeling and then thinking. Haven't you shown that to yourself? Haven't you ever been on a holiday of some kind with people you love and you just feel so good that you've just got these wonderful shock absorbers and nothing's bothering you? And you're just feeling so good that it just gets better and better and better and better and better? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that, that's, isn't that the art of allowing? Isn't that kind of the momentum? We talked about momentum a moment ago. Yeah. Momentum is a natural. Uh -huh. And so when you realize that, but here's the thing that we're talking about here today. Momentum is natural. And so it's more likely that I'm going to, for now, keep going in the direction of my momentum. Mm -hmm. But I can alter the direction of my, mon my momentum at any time. So let's say I got some negative momentum. Let's say I went to Marathon Coach and I had cleared out a spot of 16 days where they could work on it and I left them a list and I told them when I, that when I would be back and so I went off and at some inconvenience lived in hotel rooms and carried things in the back of the car so that they could have the coach so that they could complete the list and then when I get back on the 16th day I can't find my coach because they've left it locked inside the building. So then I go to find a hotel, but there aren't any because I haven't planned ahead because I planned on sleeping in the coach. And so, and so now I'm responding to what is. And now I'm feeling not very cared for, like they don't really care about me, that they didn't take the time to listen, that I'm not very important to them. The momentum sort of, now a momentum like that can take you back to things that were activated within you years ago. Maybe even to other coach manufacturers or, or in other words. Mm -hmm. And so now I've got this momentum going and it doesn't feel very good. But it's actually easier to go that way because everything that I'm seeing is about that. I can't get a hotel room. I can't get the things out of my coach that I need. I'm going to have to wait for the weekend. It's easier to go with the momentum, you see. Mm -hmm. But then, so then then Esther said, you might be recognizing this as a real live story. Then Esther said, Esther said, 
I'll bet that they shined that coach so beautifully and cleaned every window in it and it's so ready for us that they left it inside so it wouldn't be dusty. So she began to turn this way a little bit. Well, when they got there, they had not worked on the coach at all. They had just barely taken it in.